Well, good morning everyone, welcome back to my study. And we're into the last two verses of our section in Isaiah. We'll be back uh, later on in the year, towards the end of the year in Isaiah 13. But we're going to pause and, and jump into John's Gospel next week. So we're coming to the very last two verses. And it's like the, the crescendo at the end of a, a concerto. Uh, sort of really ramming home for us uh, the joys and privileges of of being God's people and uh, and there are two things I want to notice about the two before I leave verse six for tomorrow for John notice they're still on that idea of singing and shouting for joy sing to the Lord verse five shout aloud and sing for joy people of Zion verse six that that joyful um, powerfully emotional uh, sense of Isaiah 12 is still there it's, it's building and building isn't it and notice we're given two uh, two times a, a, a reason to praise God. Uh, verse 5, for he. Verse 6, for great. And that's important. There's little connecting words for. Give us a hint as to the direction of travel. We're told to praise because. For is a because word, isn't it? Um, I wonder why you sing for joy. John had us thinking about that yesterday, didn't he? Uh, why do we sing for, for, for joy? Perhaps another good question for us to ask is, why do we praise? Who do we praise? It's very easy, isn't it, to look for praise for ourselves. Uh, praise me because I did well in my exams. Praise me for the lovely garden that I've designed and created. And praise me for uh, the project at work or for the success of the pupils I've taught. It's very easy, isn't it, for us to want that glory to shine on us, for people to see how good we are. It's not natural to us, I don't think, to point away from ourselves and say, look how great that person is. When we read uh, of John the Baptist and his words about Jesus, I must decrease and he must increase, we think, gosh, that's... That's very countercultural, isn't it? So much of what we see in the media, and we know in our own hearts and in our society, is about self-praise and self-acclamation. We want everybody else to think we're great. And it's quite important to spot that, because we won't see how extraordinary verse 5 is if we don't recognise that. In many ways, verse 5 is summarising in just a couple of words everything we've seen in Isaiah up to this point. Shout to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Glorious things. Um, glory comes uh, from a Hebrew word to mean sort of weighty, significant, uh, impressive. Um, you can imagine um, when you, if you were buying uh, a statue and you've got a bronze or marble, and you'd, you'd weigh them in your hands. It's a beautiful thing, but it's also weighty. God has done weighty, significant, glorious things. Jesus has done those. Glorious things. How he summarises the rescue uh, from the wrath of God that is laid on Jesus. I guess we could say that God has done glorious things in all sorts of ways. The rescue from Egypt was a glorious thing, wasn't it? A meeting with his people at Sinai, Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, and so on and so forth. You can multiply many, many times over uh, glorious things that reflect the nature of God in the world. But undoubtedly, given what uh, Isaiah is praising God for here, the, the atoning work of Jesus is in view. It is the, the weightiest of the glorious acts of God. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because, I don't know about you, but I, I can sometimes think, that a, 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 a guy hanging on a, on a cross doesn't look at all impressive. Ten plagues on Egypt, parting of the Red Sea, or um, Elijah on Mount Carmel uh, mocking the prophets of Baal as they beat themselves and cannot get their God to rain down fire on the sacrifice. And God just, one prayer bangs, just, just obliterates everything. So many things that seem more impressive. And yet if, if uh, glory is, is found in, in revealing the nature of God, the cross is more significant. If it is 
found in, in what the act achieves. The cross is by far the most important act in human history, isn't it? And Isaiah sees that. He sings to the Lord that he has done gloriously. And his desire is that that is known everywhere. Because, of course, until the world sees the glorious things God has done as glorious, he is being robbed of the praise that he deserves. Isaiah's concern for the praise of God is quite different to our own desire for praise for ourselves, isn't it? But if we've understood what Isaiah has seen, if these chapters have, have been significant for us, then we must say, surely, I must decrease and he must increase in the, in the, the view of the whole world. Let's pray that would be the case, shall we? Heavenly Father, please, would we see the weightiness and the glory of the things that you've done in the Lord Jesus, and would we desire to decrease, and to not be centre stage, but put the cross of the Lord Jesus centre stage in our, in our speech, in our lives, in our community, in our world, that you might get all the glory, that you might be seen to be as glorious as you are. We pray in Jesus' name. We'll see you again tomorrow.